follow-up radar observations at the Arecibo Planetary Radar Telescope, performed almost immediately after the discovery, ruled out that possibility. These radar observations, coupled with more detailed analysis of historical images, eliminated the possibility that Apophis would collide with the Earth in 2029, but it will come extremely close. It is currently projected to come so close that it will fly within the orbit of geosynchronous satellites, less than 40,000 kilometers over our heads. While this close encounter with Earth won't be cause for alarm, the story isn't over. The exact path Apophis follows in April 2029 is crucially important because it will determine whether it hits the Earth when it circles around a second time in 2036. If, in April 2029, Apophis passes through a very narrow window, known as a keyhole, as it passes by the Earth, its orbit will be affected such that when it returns in 2036, it will directly cross that of the Earth and collide with it on Friday, April 13th. So will Apophis pass through this keyhole in 2029? In order to answer this, we need much more precise observations. As of early 2011, Apophis is very close to the Sun to make any accurate observations and won't be in a good position until late 2011. In order to accurately determine whether the Earth is in for a bad day on April 13, 2036, we also need to know more about Apophis' spin direction and other physical parameters. These will be collected from a variety of projects at NASA as well as the Arecibo Radar Telescope in 2013. These radar observations in particular will allow astronomers to determine the location of Apophis through 2070. Throughout its history, life on Earth has been at the mercy of these wandering, early building blocks of our solar system. Early in its life, Earth was bombarded much more than it is now. It is easy to understand how ancient people viewed the arrival of a comet, these uncreators, with dread and despair. Paradoxically, life on Earth may owe its very existence to the early reign of comets and asteroids across the surface. They may have been the source of water and other primordial building blocks, bringing the spark from which early life emerged.